All right. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the country. Thank you so much for joining us at our USONIT webinar. Uh, this today's session is actually really fun. My, I'm your host and moderator, Kenneth, I'm in product marketing. Um, again, thank you so much for spending the time with us today. And you can see we've got some really awesome setups today talking about our latest technology for conference room solutions. Now, before we start, um, I, I do want to do a couple housekeeping items uh, to make sure our webinar runs very smoothly. Uh, number one, at your very bottom of your Zoom interface, you're going to see a little Q&A session. Um, that's really where I would like to have everybody put in your questions, if any. We do have our lovely team here to uh, moderate those questions, and some of those questions will get to me, and we'll invite our guests to answer those questions uh, real time. Um, you can always use the chat if any questions in general, but when, when you're using the Q&A, it helps us to better track those questions and who's asking them so we can follow up with you uh, with our guests on the team. Um, second, uh, you know, not only we have some really good content, hopefully a lot of thoughts from our you know, product leaders and our partners to share with you, you do want to stay till the end. Um, one lucky winner, actually, will win this uh, USONIC portable monitor, TD1655. It's a 16-inch uh, touch portable display. You can see how thin that is, right? Um, it's a great product when you're on the road, when you need that extra productivity. Uh, when you're traveling. I use it personally quite a bit when, when we're overseas, when we're on the road. Um, so definitely stay till the end. Uh, one lucky winner will be selected. All right. So um, as I said before, today is really about conference room solutions. And, uh, you know, I, you know, we have some really special guests today. We have our product leaders. We have our partners, like I said, and we also have our sales leadership here with us. I know the audience, we have, you know, our end users and of our partners as well. So I'm going to turn, before we get into any, you know, discussions or product demos, uh, I do want to turn the, the mic to our uh, uh, guests and panelists today for them to introduce themselves. I'm going to start with the folks uh, here in Brea, our headquarter, Sean. Hey guys, my name is Sean Liu. I'm the product manager for our interactive flat panels, the ones that you see behind me. And I'm uh, super excited to be here. Thank you, Sean. Right. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Brian Fan, uh, the CEO product manager for large format displays for non interactive and also accessories. Yeah, Brian has a lot of uh, responsibilities, and he also has some really cool products we get to talk about today. Uh, I'm going to turn uh, the mic to our leadership, uh, Ryan. Hi, everybody. Uh, Ryan Strayer, Director of Sales for ViewSonic. I wear a couple different hats. I help manage our distribution team, our Pro AV team, and our VAR team. I'm uh, very excited to be here as well. And I'm um, actually celebrating my 25th anniversary uh, next week. So that's pretty, pretty crazy, but uh, notable. Oh, thank you, Ryan. Uh, and congratulations. And, and, you know, I think that's a really good point to, to talk about because you, you have a lot of long tenures here at USONIC, and it speaks to the company itself. It, it speaks to the, the culture and also our products and just the people. So, Ryan, again, congratulations. I've, I Thank think you. I've worked with you over, uh, over a decade um, and super excited to have you here to share with us on the panel programs, channel programs, pardon me. Um, with that said, we do have two very special guests from our partner community. Uh, I'll start with Josh. Hi guys, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Josh Garrigus. Uh, I'm the engineering manager for ABI Systems and a design engineer myself. Um, I was fortunate enough to come out and see some of the products we'll be talking about today. So, so I'm excited to be here and I appreciate the invitation. Thank you, Josh. I really, we, we appreciate you as well. Jeremy. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, my name is Jeremy Blanton. I'm a design consultant for CTI, and it is a privilege to be here. I appreciate the uh, ViewSonic team and all the support we've gotten over the years, and uh, look forward to the rest of this webinar. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And, and you know, Josh, Jeremy, and this really speaks to, you know, how ViewSonic is a channel first company, and there's, uh, we can't do this without you guys and, you know, to serve our end users. Now, I'm going to kick things off a little bit, you know, and again, we're talking about our conference room solutions, and I want to start with Brian, right? You guys are the product leaders, you're the brain behind all the great technologies we see and we're brought to market and the ones we're bringing to market. 
Can you share a little bit about the, you know, we all know how the market kind of has shifted greatly, right? Pre-pandemic, in the middle of the pandemic, and post-pandemic. Can you share a little bit about what is the market looks like? What does it look like today? How big is it? Definitely, Kenneth. Um, basically, right now, we're looking at a very large TAM uh, total available to market in the conference room. So globally, it's estimated about $22.6 billion by 2032. And uh, currently right now, 41% is the US, uh, North America. So that's a huge chunk. That's like $9.12 billion for, for the, the North America region. Wow. And out of that is like 47% uh, are hardware-based. Um, so as you can see from uh, uh, COVID uh, 2019, uh, before that, a lot of people were meeting in the conference room, right? The in-person meeting. But once the lockdown hit, everybody's at home. Um, they have to uh, go to school, uh, taking their meeting from home. So a lot of vir virtual conferencing was needed. Yep. But once uh, lockdown was uh, over, everybody go back to uh, the, the, the office. It, become, it becomes more of a hybrid uh, meeting. So basically... We have people remote and we have people locally, and that's when conferencing really took off in in that respect. You know, absolutely. I, I, I think what you talked about is there's a huge market, right? And obviously the, the North American region is driving that demand. And because of what you said, the dynamic of the different needs in our modern conference rooms is really not a one size fit all. Um, and hardware remains a, a, a central piece of facilitating a good implementation for uh, conference room solutions. Now, speaking of hardware, I know there's, you know, we always always talk about touch, non-touch. Um, with all the scenarios you talked about, Sean, can you share a little bit of the development from a technology and market perspective when it comes to touch versus non-touch displays? Thanks, Dan, that's a good question. Um, so we thought touch upon like the pre-COVID and post-COVID timeframe, and now we are in the, the post-COVID era, right? So a lot of people are returning to the office. We got a lot of demand. Uh, we see rises in like touch, non-touch, but we saw a little bit more on the touch side, uh, mainly because there's a huge need um, in this hybrid space right now. Um, so in the past, we have you know conference rooms, everybody's in person, and you can share your screen, your laptop, to the big screen, you can go through the slides and things like that. So it's easier. But now that with people, half of people are remote, half people are in person, it's kind of hard to collaborate. Uh, imagine that, you know, just speaking from my own experience, it's really hard to, you know, talk about numbers or like uh, finance or whatever, you know, like engineering design, like in the air without writing anything down. So that's when you start, you know, having a whiteboard. But with the regular whiteboard, it's hard also because you would capture somehow with a camera uh, for the remote participants to see, which it's very hard to set up and maybe image will be blur uh, blurry. So now we have our digital whiteboards. That's why we saw a rise in the touch displays that you can use it as a regular whiteboard, but everything can be shared to the remote participants and they can collaborate with you on top of that. So that really uh, you know, fulfill a huge need in this uh, hybrid setting yep. uh, today. You yeah, know, that's a really good point. I, I think, you know, speaking of personal experience, I have gone through that as well. There are times where you just naturally pick up your stylus and start annotating on the screen. Right. So, you know, touch has definitely picked up uh, over, over the last several years. Now, I, I do want to turn to Jeremy and Josh. You know, you guys are in the field designing solutions for our customers. Any sort of a trend or observations uh, as you kind of see where the market has been trending? Uh, or some technologies you want to highlight to our audience? Well, I, I do have to apologize in advance in case there's any architects on, on the, this uh, webinar. <laughs> but one of, one of the biggest things that I'm seeing is every new building I walk in, there is more glass walls in every single conference room and huddle space. Yeah. So the additional mm -hmm. brightness, uh, in some cases, I think it's about 100 nits brighter than uh, it, you know, the competitive uh, displays that I'm seeing on the market. Uh, right, right. That and everyone is casting to their home displays, so they all want to cast uh, to their commercial displays. And being able to do that so easily without an additional black box is a huge help. Got it. No, that see, that's that's the little things our our engineers and designers are thinking about, and that's 
you know, hopefully we'll get to touch on a lot of those points in the rest of the conversation. Josh, anything to add here? Yeah, I mean, I certainly agree with um, what was talked about earlier and, and us still being in kind of the hybrid hybrid work environments. Um, we do see people going back to the office, but there's still a lot of people that work from home or, right. or kind of, you know, mixed schedules where some people be in the office, um, some people won't. So we're seeing a lot of customers want to want to add devices that, that kind of foster that collaboration Um that's what, like, I looked at the 105 in, in particular, and, and one of the, the neat features about it was the the amounts of um, the 40 points of touch, you know, so you can have a lot of people in a meeting, um, you know, kind of interact at once, and that could be shared to, to someone on the far end. Um, and it, as well, you know, the, the 21 night aspect, kind of going, touching on what Jeremy said, you know, a lot of people are seeing their home displays that they use in, a, in di these different new unique aspects so to yeah. see kind of that consumer demand drive the commercial market is 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 commommonplace so um, you're, you're starting to see a lot of requests for that to utilize what you know Microsoft teams has provided with the, the front row solution um, so I think that's you know kind of that adaptation and of finding products that meet the, the or continue to meet the hybrid hybrid workforce yeah totally and and I think, you know, meeting equity, uh, meeting inclusiveness is all, you know, super important as we kind of build these technologies to facilitate that. And, and thank you, Josh, actually, for uh, kind of taking us into the next, you know, um, uh, session of our webinar. And I, we, we try to do a little bit different this time. And um, I want to have Sean actually uh, kind of give us a little bit of a, you know, quick demo to our audience you know, Jeremy kind of did a little bit of your work for you, but uh, awesome. let's, let's look at your products <laughs> and uh, talk about what are the key features of your show. Okay, so I'm gonna start with our uh, 105 here, uh, as you can see behind us. So you can see how big it is. Um, this is uh, 105 inch, uh, it's spanned across about eight feet and four feet height right here. Um, you really have to see in person to see how, how you know, giant or how gigantic this is. Um, uh, this is great for collaboration in like a medium sized room. And we got a lot of information today and with people start sharing screens and uh, with videos, with chats and everything like that. It just, uh, regular 16 by nine screen is not gonna do it. Uh, a lot of people in the conference room, they have like a side-by-side -side setup, you know, maybe two 75 stacked together side-by-side, -side, but you still got like the thick bezel in the middle, like cutting the screen in half. With this, you can just see the, everything in the same screen. And if you have uh, MTR or the um, Microsoft Teams room set up, switch on a front row view, you'll be able to see everything, the chat, um, the PowerPoint, the cameras on the bottom and uh, reaction on the panel on the side. So it really brings in the inclusiveness like we mentioned earlier, uh, where people, whether they're in person or remote can collaborate together. So we'll talk a little bit more in detail uh, later on throughout the webinar. And I wanna switch in gears a little bit to the panel right next to me. This is uh, the IFP G1. So, this panel has a different design philosophy compared to our IP 105. Uh, we wanna emphasize on security. And this is probably one of the most secure panels on the market right now. And why is that? Because it does not have a built-in Android or Windows running in the background. It's a very simple um, panel with just a touch interface for you. So um, there's not a lot of, not a lot of um, um, way for people to hack into the panel and not, not a lot of apps running. So that's really something that is secure, eliminates the uh, vulnerability at this endpoint, right? A um, couple other things I wanna mention is that uh, it's flexible. It has all the connections available for you. It's got HDMI and USB-C. So if you have a USB-C device, you can plug it in, you're good to go. You, you will see your screen, your content here, and then it will also charge your device as well. So you don't lose, you know, uh, you, you won't, uh, lose power as you present. Um, and that one unique feature about this I want to demo is that it's a very quick to boot panel, right? So you turn it on, you don't have to wait for the panel to boot up like, you know, a regular Android device or a Windows device. You can see no signal input. And as, you know, like a very intuitively you can just grab a pen and start writing. That is really cool. So it gives you the same kind of a uh, whiteboarding experience as you would on a regular whiteboard, but now it's digitized, right? So you can connect your device or you can use just a regular input 
and use this as a regular whiteboard. So we'll touch a little bit more uh, later on for the webinar. Thank you, Sean. Um, so I do want to you know, give the opportunity to uh, Brian to talk a little bit about your product. All right. Thank you, Kenneth. Um, so this is our CDE 30 series. I think uh, we touched a little bit on this already. But if you compare it to a consumer panel, like the one that you buy at Best Buy or, or uh, Costco, the main difference is the service and warranty. If you use a consumer TV for enterprise or commercial usage, your warranty will go down from 12 months to three months. So that's the key difference. With our product, we have three year standard, plus we have four, fifth, six, and seven year options so that you can make sure it's reliable. If something breaks, uh, you can always send it in for repair. So in terms of features, we look at the solution wise, uh, if uh, in terms of brightness, so like uh, everybody said, uh, conference room might not be just a closed door with a closed wall, there might be windows. So ambient light setting is really kind of like the uh, issue. So we make our panel really bright. 450 nits on our 43 inch, 26 inch, and 500 on 98 inch with a 25% high pace anti-glare treatment. So what that means, when the sun hits the panel, it will reflect all that and you will see really that sharp 4K vivid color on the screen meant for that conference room uh, environment. And we have virtual connectivity such as USB-C, which is none of our competitor out there have that right now with a 65 watt power delivery. So when you bring in your laptop or your surface, you just do a one cable USB-C cable to power the laptop at the same time, you can display that in the video on that display. So very unique uh, solution that we bring it into our product solution. And we'll discuss more uh, later on on other features that we have. Thank you, Kenneth. All right, thank you, Brian. Well, take a seat. Uh, thank you. Wow, that's that's a lot. And you guys, you know, don't don't freak out. There's a lot of information we just covered, and we're gonna go a little deeper into each product a little bit more for you to kind of get a feel of it and hear our partners and from you know learn their perspectives as well. Um, but before we go there, I do want to um, you know talk to Ryan a little bit. And obviously, we have, like I said, Usonic is a ch channel first company. Um, and we are here to support not only our end users, but also our partners. Um, and we really can't do what we do without them. So Ryan, you know, I, I want to pick your brand a little bit. Can you share with the audience, um, you know, for partners who are looking for resources, they're, they're trying to learn how they can sell and position a solution that is a, a legit solution that can solve real everyday problems. Right, just a little bit about what are some of the resources available that you still have made available for our partners community? Yep, so if you're a current partner, you, you know who your account manager is already. I'm sure you've got an excellent relationship with them. If you're not a current channel partner, essentially what will happen, uh, depending on where you're located and your go-to-market strategy, you'll be assigned a, um, an account manager. So you've get, basically got one quarterback to go to for everything, you know, pricing, product solutions, product demos, all that type of thing. Uh, but we've also got a, an entire team um, kind of that uh, kind of sits next to them that you can access via your account manager. So we've got uh, two end you uh, excuse me, two end user facing um, resources. So we've got an enterprise side that uh, kind of handles the accounts from 3000 above. And we also got an education team that handles K-12 and higher ed. Both those uh, resources are very knowledgeable about their um, sp specific sectors and they can help with product demos and really get into in-depth conversations with your end users to help sell our solutions. Uh, we've also got a, a team of field sales engineers. They can help on the pre-sale side and the post-sale side. So we've got a lot of you know actual you know head you know people resources out there available to you. But we also got a partner portal that you can kind of you know do it yourself. So you can go on there, log in, you get access to Smith information, product sell sheets. You can request demos everything online all I can, if you don't want to you know go directly to your sales manager so we think with all the different uh, pieces we've got out there we, we can uh, pretty much take care of everybody pretty easily hey, thank you Ryan and you, you talked a little bit you know you talked a lot about you know why Nissan is such a good 
go like go to vendor, right? Like, you know, what are some of, you know, do you have some examples of how we have added value to a specific customer or partner? You really where it comes down to, we, we everybody's got very similar product out there. So it really comes down to how we're going to kind of try to take care of them on the front side and make sure the solution works. And I think uh, one of the resources that's probably underutilized, but very, very important is our pre-sales engineers, you know, pre and post-sale. Uh, we yep. kind of find all too many times that, that team ends up getting engaged more so after the installation versus on the front side of the solution. So we're really trying to get our partners to reach out on the front side, get our field sales team engaged on the front side, make sure that solution works with the products you're going to be connecting it to. So there's a seamless uh, uh, installation and everybody's happy. So we want to ensure that, you know, you look good to your, your customers and we look good. So, you know, getting all that done on the front side is very important. No, that's, that's super important. I guess, Ryan, if I were to kind of, I mean, let's summarize, if you were to say, like, what makes you sound at that go-to uh, brand for our partners out there today? You know, it, it's pretty simple. You know, if you, you break it down, you know, into three points, it's our people, our products, and our pricing. You know, from a people standpoint, we've got a very knowledgeable team out there that's eager to help, and they really strive to be best in class and responsiveness. We're, we're not perfect, but we really, really care. And we really want to make you guys look good and, and provide the right resources for you. Uh, from a product standpoint, we're one of the few companies out there from a display perspective. I'm, I'll say indoor only because we don't have outdoor. But from indoor only, you know, we can go from 10 inches up to you know, 300 plus inches with all the different products. I know today we're talking uh, interactive and large format display, but we've got projection, we've got touchscreen, we've got desktop displays, direct view LED. So we've, we've got all the solutions. So for a particular installment, you can have one brand in there to install and service. And it makes it very easy for both the end user and the, uh, the reselling partner. Uh, and then last thing, pricing. We won't talk a lot about pricing, but for the most part, what we've been able to find is in most of our product categories, we can provide the end user with a better price and they're not having to sacrifice any, um, any value uh, with the product. So, you know, that's, you know, pretty, pretty good, uh, good offering when you can save somebody money and still give them the same type of quality product. Hey, thank you, Ryan. I, I think that's, I love your summary. I think, you know, people, products, and, and our really the value that we bring to the market is so important. Thank you, Ryan, so much. Um, and I, I do want to, you know, I know we're about, you know, 25 minutes in. So if you have any questions, guys, please do put, put those into our um, chat or Q&A. Sorry, I made that mistake myself, but put that into the Q&A session and we can answer those uh, real time. Um, I already see some co coming in as well. I, I do want to kind of, because this is really about the products. And, you know, I think one thing I'm, I'm taking away is there are so many different types of applications today. Right, because the landscape has changed so much, and really, there's you know, if we if we say you know a decade ago, everybody's kind of doing the same thing. Today, everybody is doing a little bit differently. Right, everybody's different. The needs are different. The room sizes are different. What you're trying to accomplish, where your workforce is, is different. Um, so I think the three things I kind of picked up from Jeremy, Josh, and you find gentlemen here is, it's really about security inclusiveness, right, meaning equity, and how we scale our solutions for different groups, right, from all the way from a little huddle space or huddle area, all the way to a training room or even a large conference room like we're in today, right? So I guess, you know, maybe let's get into the 105. I think this is really interesting. I think, you know, Josh spoke a little bit about that, and, and Sean, you did a little bit, you know, demo, but really, you can you break it down in more details? Do we really need such a big screen? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we talked about the 105 being a big screen, providing more screen real estate to display all the information during a meeting. And inclusiveness is one of the key uh, points we want to touch upon because there's people are remote and it's really hard for them to, sometimes if it's like audio issues or uh, display issues, they might not have the same kind of uh, like immersive experience as they were you know, inside a room, right? So we want to bridge that gap. And the 105 here is a perfect example of that. Um, like I mentioned before, you can use this as a digital whiteboard. You can annotate the content and people on the other side will be able to see it, right? So that provides some sort of a, a collaboration platform for both sides of people to work together, not just one-sided, but it's two-sided, right? Mm -hmm. So that is part of the inclusiveness that we want to provide for meetings like today, like hybrid meetings. 
And, and Sean, can you touch a little bit on, you know, you know, what size? I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's big, but it's big in a very interesting way. It's horizontal, right? What kind of room size are we looking at for, for this panel to fit in? I would say a medium sized room would be a good uh, fit for this panel. And we do have a regular 16 by nine, maybe like uh, a little bit bigger, like or smaller, 98 inch. But in terms of the, the heights, you know, it might be challenging for some people, you know, to reach the top, but this is a perfect dimension where it's wider and also uh, shorter or lower, right? So it's easier for people to, to reach the top. If, you know, they want to go across the screen, they can have a bigger workspace for multiple people to work together. Yep. At the same time, they can touch the top, no problem. Totally, thank you, Sean. Uh, Josh, I know, I want to turn to you. I know you recently got to see the product and what's your first impression when you first saw it? Um, wow, it's large, it is it's definitely big. <laughs> um, but, but kind of big in a good way. And to, to highlight this point, it, it's not overwhelming. Um, kind of the linear aspect, the linear aspect of it kind of, you know, makes it, you know, feel usable because it's, you know, the, the space we're going to collaborate on and the, the viewable surface is, is more eye level on, a, on an even plane. Um, so even though it's, it, it is a large monitor, it, it doesn't feel overwhelming in the room. Um, the one I looked at was was actually on a cart, so that's kind of a point to highlight. Is mm -hmm. is I wouldn't call it a, a necessarily easily mobile display, but based on what what we see and and the the need for customers and clients to adapt, um, this is something that could be on a cart and moved around. Um, to kind of add on to, to what we were talking about the trends earlier, one thing we're starting to see is since there's not as much. Um, service personnel or, you know, IT help that may be in the office, customers are wanting less and less, less gear in the rooms. Um, to quote, quote, one of the, the legendary engineers I work with, David Rizzo, um, he says we're getting customers out of the rack business. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of this display kind of helps to, to foster that movement because it's got the built-in microphones. Um, you can utilize it with an all-in-one conference bar. You can put a commute PC or a compute PC behind it, or use the built-in op slot. So, so there's a lot of built-in capabilities that that you don't have to add a lot of a gear on to make it a functional system and, and give you a lot of impact and and functionality. So thank you, Josh. I, I think you touch upon that flexibility of you know installing this on different kind of settings, and I know you also touch upon at the beginning of this uh, conversation you know, front roll MTR. Can you speak a little bit about that? Like, is that the kind of the core application you're seeing with this panel? Well, I would say it's not necessarily the core, but certainly a, a big component of it. Um, yeah. A lot of people are, are have certainly adopted Teams or, or even Zoom, Zoom or these other unified communication platforms. Um, I'm sure a lot of them will follow the, the same approach and layout that Microsoft has to, to give yeah. that theme or that feel that layout of, of more in-person meetings. Um, to your point, I think a medium conference room, this, this would be a good fit in, but, but you're also seeing applications where this is laid out in, in a specific, what you would call front row type room. Um, right. Here in Dallas, ABI Systems is building out a new office and we're actually deploying a room that's set up for front row um, for the specific purpose of that. Um, for, for people that have been in the AV industry, if you guys remember like Cisco telepresence rooms, there used to be customers that would spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to build out these rooms that, that gave you that kind of, you know, person to person in meeting feel. Um, this aspect ratio combined with the team's feature of front row is, is kind of mimicking that. Um, so it's, and you can do that for a fraction of the cost and still have, you know, kind of what that buzzword is, the, the meeting equity or the, the inclusiveness. Uh, so, so that paired with, you know, the team's features is, is really, a, really provides a huge impact. No, thank you, Josh. And that's really important. And, you know, I personally use Teams, you know, we use Teams every day. And you're absolutely right. Having that layout is, is you don't, you, at first I was questioning it, right? I mean, how big of a screen and the layout, how does that all work together? But when you get to experience it, you really get to see because people really do have different ways that they prefer to participate in meeting settings. Some people are a little bit shy and they might want to just text, right? Put in messages and that's totally fine. In a traditional 16 by nine, I think Sean alluded to, you just don't have that space. You might have the border. It's just not a very good experience. So thank you, Sean. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Josh. 
I, I do want to switch gear a little bit to, uh, you know, Brian, um, the, or Brian's product, I should say, your CD30. Um, Jeremy, I know you have worked with, you know, the CD30 quite a bit. Um, what do you like about it the most? What are some of the, like, key things that you always keep at top of mind when you speak to a customer about the CD30? I would say probably, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a crisp, clean image. Uh, you know, it's, it's outstanding to, to see with, you know, uh, vivid colors, great content. I think one of the more important factors though, is, uh, is I'm having to come across clients that, that require value engineering. And I really hate to use that word here because they're not losing any value. They're gaining value and features with the, with the CDE 30 series. Uh, but the price point is, is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Uh, I have, I, I've had a client that uh, recently had their budget cut and we were going to have to do 20 rooms instead of 25. Uh, they had a hard spec with another manufacturer. And when I introduced them to the ViewSonic CDE series, they actually got more features and we were able to add those five rooms back in. They were just subtle rooms, but it impacted their business. And I was able to deliver it with the ViewSonic. Well, that's, that's a great example. Uh, thank you for sharing that. And th those are the stories we hear all the time, um, you know, for, for, for both of our partners and end users, I think those are just statements that really, re re you know, resonate with us internally because we're we believe we're really doing the right things for our customers. Now, you talked about a lot about features, and and there are something unique about a CDU thirty. It's a very versatile product, right? You know, you don't have to just deploy one. Brian, can you share a little bit about, you know, when it comes to when it comes to um, versatility, how does the CDU thirty uh, fit into that bucket? <clears throat> Great question, uh, Kenneth. Uh, versatility on the CDE 30 is uh, basically a lot of connectivity options. We have HDMI, we have USB C, we also have Daisy Chain, which is basically you can uh, put multiple displays together to create like a basic video wall. Mm. So you can do maybe three by three up to nine displays. So think about this. All our displays for the 30 series can be uh, tile and daisy chain. So if you take like a 98 inch, you do three by three, that's 300 inches of real estate that you can uh, do your video conferencing on in a large boardroom or for uh, other application needed for sharing. So it comes with the VCAS, which is a built-in sharing program that's locally. We also have a uh, view board uh, display which is basically you can remotely cast or present to the display without any other software needed, and it's free. So that's using over the internet on a browser. So any uh, devices uh, from uh, Android, iOS, or laptop, PC, you can actually uh, present to that display or cast to that display. So screen sharing is very uh, uh, popular in the enterprise space and meeting room, right? Because you want to present uh, your presentation onto the screen. And also we are versity in sizes. So CD30 series has 43 inch all the way to 98 inch. And besides that, we have other products that you can uh, we accommodate like the IRP for the 105 inch ultra wide. We also have the rec view, which can go up to 216 inches. So in terms of uh, versatility and uh, product across product categories, Nissan is the only provider right now that we can see in this uh, field. No, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And, and I know today we're talking about conference room solutions, but I think you just gave me an idea. When you're tiling up 98 in 98 inch displays, you're essentially in a control room, mission control type of environment. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So now you can put multiple content to, into that screen and it can become your command and center environment, right? That is very interesting. And so there's a lot of versatility in terms of the way you connect it, which gives the ability to install it in very robust yes. ways, right? Okay, that's that's really good to know. Um, actually, I have a question here um, from you, you. How do you, can you say a little bit more about, um, is, is this certified with Exxon Crestron by any chance? What, what are the certifications here? Yeah, so uh, for AV control system, we are Crestron certified, which is version one is the old one and version two, which is the latest one that has uh, XIO cloud capability. So you can manage all our CDE 30s and even our IP remotely or locally uh, mm. on a Crestron platform. We're also uh, Xtron and AMX certified. 
So any control system from the top three, our display can be controlled and managed. So if for, for our, our end users out there, deploying the C30 is very easy to really be compatible or certified for you based on what their infrastructure is, right? Correct. And besides the control system that's being certified, we also have our own, which is a manager, uh, a ViewSonic manager that you can, it's a cloud-based that you can remotely monitor, push content and control the unit. Yeah, no, that's really cool. So not only you get to use, you know, whatever you have already, our, our infrastructure, from an infrastructure perspective, our products will fit. Also, we have our in-house uh, software to perform device management cap capabilities uh, for, I believe for Sean, I guess it will be the same case for our IP105 as well, right? Correct. So our IP105 comes with our uh, device management software built in. Okay. So it's preloaded. Uh, it's part of the panel and you can turn it on, it's ready to go. And you can manage the panel you know, from a remote location. It's a web-based dashboard. You can turn on and off the panel. You can broadcast content. So there's a lot of different things you can do to manage the panel. Yeah. And, and Jeremy, I mean, before we move on to a different product, I know you, 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 know, you have worked on the CD30 quite a bit, like I said. And hearing everything the team is, is going to be discussing, um, you know, Obviously, there is an elephant in the room, and when you think about digital signage or presentation displays, there are you know bigger brands like Samsung, LG, and uh, and you run into them all the time. And and how how like and you win with Usonic. Can you share a little bit why are we so much better than some competition? Well, I, I I have to reiterate, you know, uh, the, the pricing for one, uh, the pricing beats uh, Samsung, you know, by twenty twenty five percent. It is. It actually offers more features for an equivalent series that they have. Uh, I also think that uh, you know some of the advantages I have are I haven't experienced any long lead times. Uh, products mm -hmm. been available when I needed it, uh, and I've also and this is a rare thing for me to say, but I have not had a DOA. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the packaging is probably a little bit better when it ships than some of our other uh, manufacturers that we work with. And I think the scalability of being able to go to a desktop solution all the way to the conference room and even digital signage. And, and even with, uh, if you're going to use uh, tiled LCDs, having the uniform bezel uh, yeah. makes all the difference in the world. But those, those are things that, you know, right out of the gate, make it a much better product. Hey, thank you, Jeremy. I, I, it really resonated with you and all what you said. And also when Brian said about, you know, you know when you go into Costco, you see all those shiny TVs, um, they're just not built the same, right? When you're thinking about your conference room solutions, you do really need to look at these commercial grade, enterprise grade products. Um, I know Jeremy talked a little bit about the haze and the brightness that you can run into in today's modern design of offices and the warranty, right? And, you know, things might not go perfect every single time, but you, you have a very robust system, uh, not only from a warranty offering perspective, but also from people that are standing uh, behind like what Ryan was talking about, the pre-sale engineering team and also the post-sale engineering team and our customer service team are always here to, to help. Um, now for today's, the last bit of today's product discussion, I want to turn to Sean. We touched on briefly on the IPG one. Now, you know, I don't think Jeremy and, and Josh had the opportunity to interact with this yet. Unfortunately, I haven't, it's a very new product. Um, can you elaborate on what is the, really the core, core benefit of having a, having, well, having not A, but having no OS at all. Yeah, so this is a brand new panel. Uh, so we just got this a few weeks ago. So no one has it yet, I can mention. Um, the core feature, I, it comes down to a couple elements, I would say. The first thing is security, definitely, right? Uh, without OS building, this is actually one of the things that we developed based on a customer's feedback. Um, a lot of customers, they. plug in and they want to just go with the meeting setup and just with minimal setup for the meetings, right? And they don't really use anything that is running in the background. If there's an Android or Windows running, they don't need that. They just want a simple solution. So we've developed this based on what our customer's feedback is and, and how we, what, what we, we see the feedback. And we created this solution without an OS and it really eliminates that uh, vulnerability endpoints from this uh, display perspective. So it doesn't, have any way for people to, to hack in or to, you know, to go into and steal your information because first of all, there's no storage. You can't really store any important documents or 
any sensitive information on a panel for people to, to take or to steal from, right? So, um, you know, it's basically free from any cyber attacks uh, from that perspective. And uh, the second thing is that the, the flexibility part of it, right? Um, and it provides all the connections you need. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, um, HDMI, uh, USB P, uh, type B for touch, and also USB-C, one cable connection. You're ready to go. And also there's a slot in the back. So in case you want to have a more integrated solution, um, we have options for that too. We have, uh, you know, uh, i5, i7, Windows slime PCs. We do. We also have a Android EDLA certified slime PCs. You can plug in the panel in the back and make it a more integrated solution if you don't want to have any device plugged in, right? Uh, third thing is simplicity. I think of simplicity for the panel because you turn in, you can turn on the panel, it's ready to go. Uh, it's a quick boot and takes like a few seconds to boot up. Um, so, you know, you can turn it on and you can ready to write on a, a board or you can plug in and you're with it, good to go. Yeah. So it's two things I can think of on, on this panel. Yeah, no, I, I want to push on security a little bit, right? So when you don't have an OS, then it's, we always say it's less vulnerable, right? Like how so? Can you, you know, I, I'm sure the audience- Yeah, can... so- um, we have, you know, people, I've heard stories in the past where people might be, uh, you know, uh, logging into the panel, maybe they install any unauthorized apps, maybe they can, you know, silo it or something like that and kind of, you know, getting information out of the panel without, any, you know, without permission, right? So that's something that uh, happened in the past and it caused a lot of uh, financial, you know, uh, problems or damage, right, to the, to the company, to the organization. So uh, with this, you can't really silo anything. There's no Android. You can't really, uh, you know, secretly install any apps on it, right? So that's the security part of right. that panel. And I guess even in a cyber attack, right, there's really no OS for people to penetrate, right? There's the, there, there's no environment for them to even plant any sort of virus. Correct. So there isn't a slot for a Wi-Fi card. So you can't even plug in a Wi-Fi card and provide internet access to anybody else, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a plain panel, doesn't have an Android running, no Wi-Fi card. So it, basically there's no way for people to go in to the panel. And, to information. I actually have a question here from the audience. You showed the right away feature. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, uh, do you need to have anything plugged in to activate that feature or no? Good question. So for the right away feature, there's different options on a panel. So what I just showed earlier, it was on a um, channel with no inputs, right? So mm -hmm. it's just a black screen. It says no signal. Right. It's not writing right away. So you don't have to plug in any device to use that feature. But it also gives you the option, if you want to plug in a device, you can do that also. You can enable that feature on that channel. And if you, for example, you plug in your laptop and you want to show a website and you want to write on it, that's also work. You can just turn on that uh, channel and make sure the right away feature is available for that channel. Got it. So for the right away feature itself, if you just want to use it like the way you demoed, you don't need to have the OS at all. Obviously, Correct. it doesn't come with one and you don't need to have anything plugged in. Yep. It just happens on the panel. Okay. Correct. Perfect. And then a question for, also another question for you, actually, Sean. Um, you know, technologies upgrades, right, over time. And obviously, you know, when we're thinking about compute systems, they will start to be a little bit slower, a little bit clearer in the next couple of years. Now, what, when you talk, you talked a little bit about flexibility, how does this kind of fit into that long-term total cost of ownership type of conversation? Yeah, so this panel provides a pretty good TCO or total cost of ownership for uh, any organization because you think about, you know, when you upgrade a panel, a lot of times that if it's a all in one panel, you pretty much need to upgrade everything because, you know, the PC or the processor built into the panel, it's gonna get outdated you know, maybe three, five years max, right? Um, but with this panel, all you need to do is to swap out the module, or if you don't use the slotting module, you plug in your own device, you don't even need to worry about, you know, changing the, the, the gut of the PC right. or the, you know, the right. processor, right? Um, like I mentioned before, this does not have a built-in OS, so it doesn't need a lot of like, like high-end processor or graphics cards to drive that right. panel. It's just basically using your own device. So when it comes to upgrade, the touch panel, it's just a touch panel and you don't need to swap out the whole thing. And it lasts for about 50,000 hours minimum. Mm -hmm. That means if you use for just a few hours a day, it will last for many, many years to come, right? right? Uh, so it's definitely good for your budget and good for the environment as well. Right. 
And another customer is asking, audience is asking, you know, we all talked a little bit about device management, right? Uh, Brian talked a little bit about that. Now, this is no OS. Can you still manage that? If so, how, how can you manage that? Yeah, so we have a new device coming out soon, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll talk about that in our future webinars. Yeah. But it's a device where you can plug in to our panel, and it allows you to use the same management software that we provide for all the other viewboards on the same box where you can control this uh, IPG1 panel if needed. So that's available in the coming future. I guess, you know, we talked a little bit about viewboard manager, right? That's what we're talking about here. Uh, Sean, can you talk about some of the core functions the viewboard manager software can, you know, offer to our conference room panels? Okay. Yeah, so for our Visonic manager software, uh, it's part of the uh, viewboard package. Um, so it allows you to quickly enroll the device uh, meaning that you know, once you have the panel, all you need to do is to get the serial number of the panel and you can enroll a device onto the dashboard and you're good to go. And once it, the device is turned on, it'll connect to our server. And now you have the capability to see all the information such as the IP address, MAC address, and uh, different apps being installed and things like that. You can, uh, you can see all that information uh, as well as you can control it from um, you know, remote location. So any uh, IT admin, if they're traveling, they can, if they have their laptop, they can see the panel uh, deployed on the field and you can see it uh, whether it's online, offline. Um, they can send um, messages to the panel or specific panels if they want to. Mm -hmm. um, and they can also schedule tasks, meaning that you can schedule some panels to be turned on at a certain time, shut down at a certain time. So just want to touch upon a few uh, high level features, but right. there's a lot more to that. Sure, no, absolutely. And I, I think for, for today's session, I think we have talked quite a bit, right? We have talked about, thank you, Sean, the G1, IFP, and Brian shared with us the CD30, and we have Jeremy and Josh sharing their experience, their perspective, our solutions um, in a conference room setting. Um, I'm super excited. I think we have a lot, actually, I'll touch on that just a little bit, but we have a lot of really fun products and technologies that we're launching or just brought to the market this year. I do want to tackle a couple of things from audience as well. You know, some are specific to a product, but there are some, you know, other questions coming in. There's one one uh, audience, one of our audience asks, are, are these large screen solutions um, can bundle with cameras? Uh, Brian, what are some of the options? Yeah, so in terms of accessory for our display, we have so many to fit your solutions, such as the cart. Uh, wall mount and also mobile uh, stand so that you can put on a uh, mobile stand, you can move it, it's mobile so you can uh, from one location to another. We also have some of the cameras yeah. and yeah. microphone yes. for video conferencing solutions. We have a Zoom certified camera. Is that the one in the back? Yeah, exactly. That's okay. the BB Cam 201, which is Zoom certified. And then uh, we also have microphone and uh, wireless Bluetooth. So you can pair those to the camera. So if you have a small to a large conference room, uh, you can expand the radius of the microphone coverage. So you can uh, cover those solutions. So from anything from small, like cutter space, small, medium, large, or even like uh, auditorium size, we have solutions for those type of accessory to fit with our uh, display solutions. So long story short, there are many, several camera options, but also depending on your setup, uh, there are many ways to outfit, install, and deploy exactly. our solutions. Um, there is another question. Is, is the new interactive board using standard HID protocol? Anyone, any one of you? HDMI? H no, USB. Oh, USB. Okay. USB touch, yeah. So uh, most of our IP are you, SB HID uh, compliant, so meaning you can put any devices that want, that need touch, you don't need a drive for it. Got it. Okay. Yep. Great. Um, and another question here, uh, I might have missed it. Uh, is Wi-Fi seven supported on any of these displays? It will be supported. Currently, it's Wi-Fi six, Currently and Wi but we will have Wi-Fi seven coming. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Um, we touch on we touched on several questions, you know, during our discussion. These are questions I think we're also almost at time. Um, I do I see a couple other questions I don't think we'll be able to get to, but we will definitely circle back with you. I think there's one question about a uh, 
odd shape. So we'll, our customer service team and our team will get back to you. Um, there's a comparison, a question regarding our Yalink solutions. How do we compare? So I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we can get down to the specifics uh, with our product team. Um, these guys have their specs kind of memorizing their brain. So um, we can probably do another hour just on that topic alone, but we'll get back to you for sure. Um, and I, you know, I think this really concludes our webinar today. I think my learning is the market is more dynamic than ever. It's a huge market. And because of the needs and the technology advancement requirements, and I think USANA is uniquely positioned uh, really to support different kinds of conference room settings uh, with our, you know, from 50, 55 all the way to 98 or in a way that you can go to 300 with, with your CD30 uh, tiling. Um, so uh, by the way, guys, I want to leave this webinar with this. This is more of a little Easter egg type of situation. Uh, we are launching, like I said, we're launching some great new products. Uh, we're going to have webinars to talk about them very soon. So stay tuned for those. And what we're talking about are, Sean talked about it, MTR solutions. Uh, we're bringing to market our own ViewSonic certified, I should say Microsoft Team Group certified ViewSonic solutions. And we're also providing a really cool collaboration software for enterprise customers. So I'm super excited. Stay tuned for those webinar invites. Um, and what you will get after the webinar is you're gonna get an email from our marketing team. You'll get the collaterals that we have talked about during the session. And you can simply respond to that email if you need further assistance or just wanna connect with the Musonic team, we're here to help. All right, so again, thank you all very much for spending your time today with us. Hopefully you have some of that takeaway. Um, and if you need to, you know, circle back with us, feel free to reach out to us. I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much.